So next let's start with WBCs. So under WBCs we will be discussing the myelopoiesis first. Then about the uh, leukemia starting with acute lympho uh, lymphoblastic leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia. Then chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Then we will discuss the various myelo uh, myeloproliferative neoplasms. Then myelodysplastic syndromes. Then myelodysplastic syndrome bar myeloproliferative uh, neoplasms. Then about Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Then the plasma cell dyscrasias. And then Langer, uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis and then the various CD markers. So starting with myelopoiesis, so the maturation of myelo, uh, myeloid cells starts with myeloblasts. Okay? So from the, from the myeloblasts, the promyelocytes are derived and after that myelocytes come, then the metamyelocytes, then the band forms and then the uh, mature granulocytes which is the neutrophils, eosinophils or basophils. So, under this, if you see, the myeloblasts are the precursor cells. So, the promyelocyte, the second stage, is going to be the largest cell in this series. Okay, so promyelocytes is the largest series here. And then in the myelocytes, you are going to have the specific granules. So, the specific granules start with myelocytes. And if you see, the cells are going to appear like this, like a D shaped nucleus. So, the nucleus is pushed to one side and it is going to have a D shaped nucleus. So, next comes the metamyelocyte. Metamyelocyte is the one in which the indentation starts. So, the cell is going to be like this and then the cell is going to start having an indentation in the nucleus. Then comes the band forms. In this band forms, the indentation is going to be there but it is going to deepen and so that the nuclear um, lobes are going to have a parallel arms like this. So, the uh, indentation has deepened and it has formed parallel lobes like this. Okay. Then in neutrophil, eosinophil and basophil, as such, the nucleus has become lobated. So, commonly it is going to be trilobated. Okay. So, seeing the difference between the myeloblasts and lymphoblasts, so myeloblasts are going to be larger in size and they can have the presence of granules. In lymphoblasts, the granules are not going to be present. And in myeloblasts, the characteristic finding is a presence of an oil rod. So, it is going to just look like a rod like this. So, if myeloblasts contain, uh, if oil rods are present, you can label it as myeloblasts directly. So, it is not necessary that oil rods should be present, but when it is present, myeloblasts are, it is classical for myeloblasts. So, when there is a collection of these oil rods in the cell, it is going to give uh, be given a special name called as phagot cell. So, that cell is going to be called as a phagot cell. Characteristically, we are going to see these phagot cells in APML. And in myeloblasts, if you see, there is going to be multiple nucleoli as compared to that of a lymphoblast wherein you get only 0 to 1 nucleoli. And the, if you use the special stains, you can identify whether it is a myeloblast or a lymphoblast. So, myeloblasts are going to be positive for the special stain myeloperoxidase. So, myeloperoxidase is a enzyme which is present in the primary granules of the myelocytes, right? So, the myeloperoxidase will be positive in myeloblasts. Then, it is also positive for pseudon black B. And apart from that, periodic acid shift stain is going to give a diffuse kind of positivity in AML M6 alone. So, normally it is not positive, only in AML M6 it is going to be positive. While periodic acid shift is going to be positive in ALLs that is acute lymphoblastic leukemias and here it is going to show a characteristic block positivity. In AML M6 it is a diffuse positivity while in AML M, uh, sorry ALL it is going to give a block positivity. Apart from that TALLs are going, T cell ALLs are going to have positivity for acid phosphatase also and this acid phosphatase is going to have a characteristic polar positivity. Okay. Let us see the images related to this. So, this first image is a myeloblast. If you see, the cell is quite large as compared to the second image. And here, there is multiple nucleoli in this cell. So, each of the cell is having multiple nucleoli. And there is also presence of this oil rod over here. If you see, this is the oil rod. So, this is a myeloblast. While if you see the lymphoblast, here this cell is hardly having any nucleolus. So, I can see one nucleolus here. So, this kind of scant cytoplasm with high NC ratios is going to be common for both uh, blasts. While the uh, nucleolus is going to be 0 to 1 in a lymphoblast. Okay? And there is no granules or oil rods present in that. Then the third image is going to be the myeloperoxidase stain which is a special stain highlighting the myeloblast giving this blackish brown positivity. And this image is going to be the uh, a block positivity which we see in the uh, lymphoblast. Okay? So, in ALLs you can get this kind of a block positivity. 
So, what was the diffuse positivity in AML? It was in M6. Then, this is the uh, last image is the polar positivity which we see in TALL. So, this is the polar positivity. If you see the at one pole alone, you are going to have a dot like positivity called as the polar positivity seen in uh, TALL. And this Polar positivity is, is there for the special stain acid phosphatase and this acid phosphatase is going to be tartrate sensitive. Okay. So, now we had seen about the blast and the differentiation of myelopoiesis. So, now let us see what is the normal leukocyte count. So, the normal leukocyte count is going to be 4000 to 11000 per millimeter cube. Of this, 40 to 70 percentage of the cells is the neutrophils. While 20 to 40 percentage is going to be the lymphocytes, 2 to 10 percentage is the monocytes, 1 to 5 percentage eosinophils and 0 to 1 percentage is the basophils. So, where do you get increase in neutrophils? That is neutrophilia is going to be seen in bacterial infections. While lympho lymphocytosis is lymphocytosis is going to be seen in viral and tubercular infections. While monocytosis is going to be seen in malarial infections. While eosinophilia is going to be seen in parasitic infections, apart from that it is also going to be seen in allergic conditions as well. Basophilia is going to be seen in allergy and also in CML. So, most important thing in CML is to look for basophils. So, basophilia will be seen in CML. So, let us see some image based questions related to non-neoplastic WBC disorders. So, the first image if you see this neutrophil, neutrophil nucleus is having lot many lobes as compared to a normal thing. Normal one is a trilobe, but here you are having multiple nu uh, nuclear lobes. So, this is what we call as a hyper segmented neutroph uh, neutrophil and this hyper segmented neutrophil is a feature of megaloblastic anemia. So, you can call it as hyper segmented neut neutrophil when you see at least one six lobe neutrophil or more than 5 percentage of 5 lobed neutrophil. Okay, this is the criteria for calling it as a hyper segmented neutrophil. Then we see hypo segmented neutrophil in the second image. So, in this image, if you see the neutrophil is having only 2 lobes. So, this is what we call as hypo segmented neutrophil and hypo segmented neutrophils are seen in a genetic condition called as pelger hute anomaly. Pelger hute anomaly and this kind of cells are also seen in myeloid dysplastic syndrome and therein you are going to call it as pseudo pelger hute anomaly. Okay. So, hypersegmented neutrophils are seen in pelger hute and pseudo pelger hute anomalies. Then the, uh, we are, then the third image if you see we are seeing giant granules in the neutrophils. So, look at the size of the granules as compared to these granules. It is quite big right. So, these kind of giant granules are seen in neutrophils in Shediac Higashi syndrome. So, while discussing the chapters initially also we had seen what is Shediac Higashi syndrome, right? So, Shediac Higashi syndrome you are going to have giant granules in neutrophils. Then the th next image is going to be, if you see in this neutrophils, mildly if you can appreciate there is going to be an inclusion like this, a light basophilic inclusion is there and this is called as may Heglin anomaly. So, in may Heglin anomaly you can have three things. So, remember it like this. So, GLI from the Mayheglin anomaly I am going to take. So, G is for giant inclusions and then you are going to have giant platelets as well along with low platelets. So, GL and IN for inclusions. Okay. So, giant platelets, low platelets and giant inclusions in the neutrophils are seen in Mayheglin anomaly. Then the next one is Alder Rili anomaly. Here again if you see the neutrophil granules are quite coarse and thicker right. So, this is what we see in Alder Rayleigh really an anomaly and here you are going to see large cytoplasmic granules not only in neutrophils in lymphocytes and monocytes as well. So, this is actually seen in mucopolysaccharidosis. Okay. So, Alder Rayleigh really anomaly, uh, Alder Rayleigh really anomaly, Mayheglin anomaly, Shediac Higashi syndrome, hypersegmented and hyposegmented neutrophil. So, these can come as image based questions as well.